Hey, how's it going? Today I'm going to be talking about rendering and what that is. Uh, there are different uh, applications for rendering in different terms, some of those being web design, uh, text or image processing, uh, 3D modeling, audio and music, as well as legal and real estate or property, as well as food. Uh, just uh, some of those here is what I uh, did today if we were to focus on computer graphics and rendering and what that is. Uh, rendering in the context on, of computer graphics, rendering in the process of generating a 2D image or animation from a 3D models or a scene. This process involves simulating how light interacts with objects in the scene to calculate the color, shading, shadow, reflection, and other visual effects. The goal of rendering is to produce a realistic or stylish final image that can be displayed on the screen or used in various media such as video games, movies, architectural visualization, or product design. If anything, uh, when we talking about how uh, front end, so how if we're looking at the computers and software, uh, if uh, the image itself and the way how software looks, it would need to look crispy, right? So, whatever that be on uh, your uh, tablet, uh, phone, or perhaps web design, so whatever pro uh, product you are developing, uh, the way how it looks, right? So in regards to rendering and uh, uh, how it looks is the one piece of the puzzle as well as you uh, need to make sure that it would load on the screen very fast. Uh, ideally it would amount a third of the second. <laughs> so, so it can be very challenging for some of the consoles or perhaps some of the PCs or the, uh, your tablets or phones to load whatever image you might be interested in uploading as well as all of the UI UX and how are you gonna, uh, your uh, prospects going to interact with your software so it can be too challenging so, so it's need, it needs to look great as well as if you would be there uh, having uh, 20,000 daily users how what would be the experience of those 20,000 daily users as well as how challenging it would be to load and uh, your software on the screens and it, or interaction itself is just something that you need to take into account. Uh, different rendering techniques and algorithms used in computer graphics that can include uh, rasterization, this is commonly used technique for real-time rendering in video games and interactive applications. It involves converting 3D objects and scenes into 2D images by projecting them onto a 2D plane. Uh, rasterization is a vision but may not be produced as realistic results as some of the rendering methods. Uh, perhaps worth mentioning some of the video games, the way how they are doing it. Uh, they not necessarily. Uh, uh, can't remember the name of the game, but uh, the map itself would be a very large map, right? So it, it could not necessarily upload entire game uh, from the beginning. It would allow people to enter the game or enter the software, and so people would be able to access that software in the first place. And uh, software itself upload. Uh, files as it need to so it feed into so the one way is to you perhaps uh, <laughs> to you operate the software solutions depending on the size of the software if it would be very challenging and time consuming not necessarily download entire software perhaps upload some parts of the software I see some projects out there that are following a similar business model especially if it's very complex and it can be challenging or different uh, ways how they want to upload it, so <laughs> so that's one way, right? Ray tracing is a more advanced rendering technique that stimulates the path of rays or flights as they interact with objects in the 3D scenes. It can produce highly realistic images with accurate light. 
the reflections and shadows. However, ray tracing is completely intensive and often used uh, offline rendering for movies and high quality visualization. So there's a one way to do it. Uh, I have seen some of the YouTubers <laughs> doing some interesting things with that, and uh, with the rise of technology, perhaps, and uh, budget cuts, uh, there's some uh, ways of doing it, uh, creating visual arts with the ray tracing. Either way, uh, path tracing. Path tracing is subject to uh, of ray tracing that uh, simulates the behavior of light by tracing rays backwards from the camera into a scene. It's known for its ability to produce physically accurate images with global illumination effects, but it can be even more uh, computably intensive at traditional ray tracing. Uh, there are some of the graphics cards providers who are working a lot on the different areas uh, when it requires visualization as well as light uh, falling on different pieces and how that would be reflect, uh, reflected to the people watching. Rasterization with shading. In addition to basic rasterization, various shading te techniques are applied to stimulate lighting and material properties. These include techniques like uh, phone shading, ground shading, and more modern applications like a physical based rendering <laughs> that focus on capturing real world material properties. Uh, so recently, some of the companies released some work of the minerals and how they can be reflected, those mineral, min, minerals, in the video games. Which is kind of interesting, I guess. So how much work uh, they are putting into, how much details they're putting into without uh, taxing too much of the system itself. So there, there are some obstacles that you're thinking about the experience of the users and how to potentially you can improve that real-time uh, and offline rendering. Real-time rendering is often interactive applications like video games where images need to be generated quickly to maintain smooth user experience. Offline rendering is used in movies and high-quality visualization where rendering time is less a concern and the goal is to produce the best possible image quality. So it just depends perhaps uh, depending on what kind of objective you have and what you're trying to achieve. Either way, uh, all of that is focusing on the user's experience and how potentially do not tax the system itself for too much while uh, creating very good experience for the user. For people up there who are interested in uh, learning more, I have made this tool in Float. I, in this tool, I'm focusing a lot on the quarter and developing a habit. When developing our habits uh, within this journal, I'm focusing on 24 hours and making most of your time, meaning 24 hours and how to optimize those hours and accomplish key areas. Some of those areas being perhaps improving your accountancy dictionary, understanding accounts, as well as money coming in, going out, as well as uh, what kind of things you like to achieve every single day. Uh, if you were to set the goals for yourself as well as how to do it, uh, some of the metrics up there, uh, perhaps improve personal, professional goals, uh, your overall time management skills, uh, key values that you like to establish for yourself, and all this process should carry on until you develop a well-lasting habit. You can find this uh, journal in the description below as well as Dr. Ito's Hazard. Uh, rendering plays a crucial role in creating visually stunning and immersive computer-generated experiences. Advances in rendering technology can lead to increasingly realistic graphics in video games, movies, architectural visualization, and other applications that that may have. Uh, if we were to begin with uh, some of the software solutions up there, and how to develop those, as well as uh, perhaps do not tax the system, so the operating systems within those uh, or devices where you're gonna be looking for your customers to operate your applications. Perhaps so that's one of the uh, ways to think about rendering and potentially how to uh, create 
a great experience for your users as well as uh, perhaps do not tax those systems, right? So is it uh, rendering? That's uh, so everyone understands as well as down the line, perhaps rendering is something myself who would be interested in more 3D art uh, from art progress into technology and perhaps creating real life solutions and solving some of the obstacles there. Uh, but we would most likely cover that, uh, <laughs> I don't know, in time frame, would be the com uh, completing one project at a time, perhaps a little bit later. Either way, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.